Thank you for joining us for this next episode of Liberty and Justice for All. My special guest is Dr. Oz Guinness, and we are talking about the problems and issues with um, not only the church, but also the world, and how these can be addressed and improved. Um, it's a wide-ranging but important conversation. Please join us for this episode as well. Um, the French Revolution, uh, as Edmund Burke wrote about in his volume about the French Revolution, was problematic for many reasons, even though there were Jeffersonian Americans who were seeking to embrace it, mm -hmm. uh, the excesses mm -hmm. of it, the rule by guillotine, the reign of terror, the uh, opposition to uh, those who are Christians and pastors and ministers and things along those lines, those sorts of things seem to be artificially conflated with the American Revolution, even among, say, Jeffersonians mm -hmm. uh, during that time, but maybe by some of the heirs of that sort of thinking uh, into our own day as well. Um, when you're talking about the crossroads between the American Revolution and the French Revolution, tell us more of what you mean by that. Well, Jefferson was rather, I think, starry-eyed and naive about the French Revolution, but he gave that up before he ran for the presidency with much more realism. But if you look at the two revolutions, they are profoundly different. So, sources. The American Revolution is largely, although sadly not consistently, think of slavery, out of the Bible. And many Americans don't realize how much of the American Revolution comes from Exodus and Deuteronomy. The consent of the government, the separation of powers, the notion of covenant in Hebrew, which became constitution mm -hmm. in 1787. You go on down the line. Yes. So the American Revolution from the Bible, the French Revolution from the French Enlightenment, mm -hmm. Voltaire, Rousseau, and so on. Or take another difference, their views of human nature. The American Revolution, very realistic, yes. because you take, say, Witherspoon teaching Madison, mm -hmm. and Madison's Federalist 51, mm -hmm. separation of powers, checks and balances, yes. why? If, Potential of abuse. If it was a government of uh, angels, that's uh, right. If, if there, there are angels instead of men, there would be no need exactly, for government. but yeah, humans yeah. are sinners. Yes, yes. Now, the French Revolution, utopian. Yeah. And all the great revolutions of the left are utopian. Yes. And the problem is, as soon as you have a gap yes. between reality mm -hmm. and the ideal, you've got to bridge the gap, and you do it through force and coercion. Yes. And that's why the revolutions, above all Mao Zedong, have been so violent. Mm -hmm. So you can go right down the line and see the differences. And today, the big difference is justice. Both sides agree on injustice, but they fight it in very different ways. As I said earlier, previous episode, the French Revolution, you set up this conflict of powers, weaponizing victims against oppressors. Whereas in the biblical, the Jewish and Christian understanding, you address truth to power and call for an about turn of heart and mind. And then you can have genuine forgiveness and reconciliation and so on. The differences are very, very profound. Yes. And the outcome is quite different. Yes, indeed. I mean, when you see the history of communist revolutions mm -hmm. and communist regimes, it seems to just be the same story over and over again of basically the elites, the communist elites, seizing property and crushing the people, yep. that seems to be the general pattern. Uh, I can't think of a single exception to that. There isn't one. Yes. No, as you know, I, I imagine your family came from part of China? Uh, we came actually from Seoul, South Korea, because oh, my really? last mm -hmm. name is a rare Korean last name, oh. but much more commonly a Chinese last yes, name. Yes, I thought so. Yes. Anyway, you know, I was born in China, yes. and I was there during the revolution, and so I grew up with a very realistic Yes. non-naive view yes. of communism. Yes. Yes. Now, but a lot of Americans misunderstand what's happening now because when you mention Marxism, they think of classical communism, mm. and that's not what we're facing. Mm. This is cultural Marxism mm. 
which comes from thinkers like Antonio Gramsci mm -hmm. in the 1920s in Italy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is said that communism is at an all-time high in popularity in this country. Mm -hmm. What would you say in regards to that? <laughs> I would say it, it's the product of extraordinary naivety yeah. among Americans who just don't know history. Yes. It has never worked out well, as I said earlier. Their revolutions never succeed. Right. Their oppressions never end. Mm -hmm. And their promises are never fulfilled. Indeed. And Americans need to understand history to see the danger where we are today. Yes, yes, indeed. I completely agree with that. Um, one of my focal points of my scholarship has mm -hmm. been on North Korea. Mm -hmm. And so I am, in some respects, more steeped into it <laughs> than is um, ordinarily pleasant to be <laughs> steeped in because it is the bleakness of a, as they call it, a pure communism yeah. that uh, has resulted in these concentration camps, has resulted in one jail of a country, mm -hmm. that has resulted in the crushing of the people and threats to the world. Mm -hmm. And so I've, uh, I've I, I'm more intimately aware of these things than perhaps you would I would like to be. Yes, yes. I'm yes, sure. Yes. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Liberty and Justice for All. Please join us for the next episode with Dr. Oz Guinness.